can you cut wood with an angle grinder? It's a good question. The short answer is yes, definitely. Long answer is yes, but it's sort of unsafe and kind of tricky. That's what we're talking about in this episode of The Honest Carpenter Show. If you want to cut wood with an angle grinder, you need the right blade. Grinders are usually used for cutting metal and masonry, and those blades tend to have abrasive edges with no teeth. That's not going to do much to wood. A company called Graf reached out to me recently and sent me their speed cutter blade specifically designed for wood cutting. It just has three large tungsten carbide teeth and this slightly odd wheel shape. It's basically designed to handle the stress of wood cutting with a grinder. See, grinders spin crazy fast, typically 11,000 to 12,000 RPM. Compare that to a circular saw, which does about 5,000 RPM, and you can see where the speed stress comes from when cutting with a grinder. So the blades seem right for cutting wood, but grinders present other problems for wood cutting as well. The biggest issue is that they're completely freehand. Circular saws have a sole plate, and you can put rip fences on them, so they create stable surfaces to cut on. But grinders don't have any of that. You just sort of hold the tool with your hands and direct it at the cut line. There are some wood cutting applications where they work really well, but there are others where they're sort of just a liability. So let's go through the process of cutting with one. But I'll say right now, this is a dangerous tool. Never work without supervision if you're uncomfortable. And all grinder work you take on is at your own risk. Grinders have a half guard, like a fender, and you always want this directed down to protect your fingers. But you want it angled up enough that you can let the blade sink into the material in a comfortable position. You typically rotate them by depressing a little catch behind the guard. You get that set where you want. Now you need your blade installed the right way. The big thing is that you want the teeth pointing in the direction that the tool spins. There will usually be a little arrow on the grinder indicating spin orientation, and one on the blade as well. Make sure these are pointing in the same direction so the teeth are engaging head on, and be sure the blade is securely tightened and that you always unplug the tool when changing blades. And really big rules here, always hold the tool out away from yourself when you turn it on or handle it live. This is an exposed blade with no spring back guard. What it touches, it will cut. You have to exercise extreme caution when working with a grinder. When cutting wood, I think you should always mark a cut line. It gives you something to follow. Then be sure to hold the tool with both hands out in front of you. The best way to make these cuts I've found is use the blade guard as a pivot. You can set the bottom edge of the guard on the material you want to cut. Now you can use it for stability as you slowly rotate the blade down into the stock. Another difference from circular saws is that grinders cut on the pull. The blade teeth spin down towards the floor rather than up at the ceiling, so it can actually be easier to start your cut at the far end of the piece and draw it back towards you. This still doesn't make the process very smooth or easy. It's hard to keep the cut square, so you may wind up with a mitered edge. And the blade doesn't cut very deeply because it's not that big. So if you have a thicker stock, like this 1 inch PVC trim I'm cutting, your blade might or might not be able to get it all in one pass. You might have to flip the stock to finish the cut. So, yes, you can technically cut wood like this with a grinder. If it's the only tool you have at hand, you can very carefully make cuts, even if they aren't as clean as circular saw or miter saw cuts. But where grinders really shine has more to do with wood shaping. By holding the blade flat, again, with both hands at all times, you can use the leading edge to pare away and lightly gouge wooden surfaces. You can see the depth I'm creating on this piece of plywood as new layers are revealed. The blade basically goes through the material like butter. Anybody looking for more carving capacity could work wonders with a wood cutting bit in a grinder. It takes away material in a smooth, almost delicate touch. It can be helpful for notching as well. With a lot of careful control, you can create grooves of various depths and hog out material with the blade. I'll warn though, your hands can get flayed from wood chips flying out, so be smarter than me here and use gloves to make your cut. The other thing I'll note is that this particular speed cutter blade from Graf is designed to also cut aerated concrete blocks. I don't have much need for that, but I thought it would work well on hardy board siding, something that I've cut with grinders before. And sure enough, it handled that application perfectly. For that reason alone, I think it could be worth having one of these blades on hand. I want to thank Graf for sending the blades out. I think they're by far the best wood cutting blades for grinders that anybody has produced yet. They're a really good product, and I'll link them below if you're interested. But I'll stress again, if you're going to tackle this yourself, be careful. Grinders don't mess around, they'll cut through fingers faster than wood. So keep all digits and body parts and clothing far away from the blade. Wear safety gear and make sure the tool has time to spin down completely before you set it aside. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and be sure to check back in for more videos soon. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.